Hello, I'm Denny from Springfield Leather Company, and uh, we have a special guest with us today, uh, a professional holster maker. Matt Gaunt with Gaunt Leather here in Springfield, Missouri. Good to be here. Glad to have you, Matt. Uh, we, uh, we've had several questions, uh, and uh, we thought we would just kind of interview each other on this deal and uh, maybe uh, answer a few of these questions and see what we come up with. But... Uh, Let's start off with the first one from Lewis. It says, I would like to learn to make a pancake holster. And what did you add to the edge? Uh, it looks like an orange piece. I'll answer that part and then uh, I'll let Matt talk about the pancake holster. Uh, I edged it with uh, glycerin saddle soap. It comes in a box like this. And it's just a... Uh, it's just a, a hard saddle soap, and uh, I used water on the edge and uh, then put a little bit of that glycerin saddle soap on it and rubbed it with a piece of uh, canvas. The canvas is, is abrasive, and it causes a little bit of heat, and that's what gets an edge. I don't know. Matt probably has 100 different ways he does his edges. Well, you know, usually on our edges, uh, I use the piece of canvas, but I just put a little uh, water on there or a little bit of that. Uh, gum tag on there and I've got a uh, little burnishing slicker wheel. Burn, uh, burnishing wheel in my drill uh, press and do it that way uh, but it's pretty hard to beat a piece of canvas and that's it right. by hand that's but, right that's uh, simple and it simple, works well. easy uh, as far as the pancake holster goes uh, we usually each gun is, is just a little bit different obviously but the first thing the best thing that you can start off with in in my opinion is you're, when you're going to make a pattern, trace your belt out and then figure out where you, how high you want that to ride, the belt, to, the holster to ride on the belt. Then lay your gun in between uh, how, how wide your loops are going to be. Then you just, you know, each gun's different because of the thickness of it. Then you just trace your pattern around the outside of that. Two pieces of leather sandwiched together and stitch that stitch pattern in. And, and then, you know, you're going to wet the holster, soak it. Put the gun in there. If you're not using a blue gun and you're using your real gun, I take a uh, Walmart sack, slide that gun down in there. You can put it in there. And then, you know, if you want to take the time to bone in all your lines and stuff like that, or you could just kind of let it simply not, not dry in there, but just kind of set in there for a yeah. little bit and it'll kind of shrink up and you should be good to go. That's good. And that, that brings up something on my pancake holsters. And I'm not a professional holster builder. I've built more than a couple, but uh, when I mold my holster, I only mold the front part of it. I don't mold the back part. Right. Yeah. You know, because I I feel like if I mold the back part, it's going to create a lot of lumps and bumps and and be yeah. less comfortable to wear. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is is that something you take into consideration? Or? Uh, I I do just a little bit just to kind of put some lines in there to kind of help the rigidity of the holster after it dries. Uh, basically, the only thing that I I want to keep crisp is the trigger guard. I want to have I want to make sure that that trigger guard has a spot to it. when it goes in. It kind of almost locks in yeah, to the retention, to the, in, yes. yeah, into the boning process. Yeah. But yeah, I don't. Uh, I try and keep the back as flat as possible uh, for the most part. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and there's a possibility at some point in the future we might. Uh, try to do a, a video on making a pancake holster. Uh, but I don't know yet. We It's hard to forecast stuff like that. Right. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, Steve asked why I made this holster inside out. Uh, and not to correct me, but is that not glycerin? 
is that glycerin, not saddle soap. It is glycerin saddle soap, Steve. Uh, but as far as why I made it to rough side out, uh, it was just a matter of preference. Uh, a lot of people like the rough out look. A lot of people like the, the slick out. Uh, when you're making single ply, you're either going to have rough out here or rough out here. If you, if you want to make this smooth out, then this is going to turn rough out if you're just doing a single ply holster. If you're lining the holster, you have your choice. You can yeah. do either one you want. Yeah. Uh, but it makes no difference. Uh, you know, I like the look of a rough out holster myself, yeah. but as far as just something uh, utilitarian, uh, a lot of people think it's kind of homely. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, there's there's really not a, a beauty to it, in my opinion, but I, I do like the look of it. Yeah. Uh, Clint Eastwood wore rough out holsters in most of his spaghetti westerns you know yeah uh, and it's just a it's just a different look mm -hmm. uh, but there's nothing there's nothing pro or con to it like i said you know you've got the smoother side in there but yeah yeah there's another question on down here uh it says i made the holster rough outside because it wasn't lined is it bad to have the rough side against the gun in other words do you want the inside smooth all the time to protect the gun and I, I personally don't think the, the rough side of the leather is going to abrade the metal very much at all, if any. Uh, I've heard people say, yes, I used to carry my uh, gun in a holster that was rough on the inside and it wore the, right. the bluing off of the gun or something. But I would be willing to say that a smooth holster would do the same thing yeah. over a period of time. You know, over the years that we've been making holsters, it doesn't matter what you do, rough in, smooth, you know, if you line it, you're going to get a little bit of holster wear on it, no matter what you do. It doesn't matter. Some guns are worse than other, like these, you know, just a standard uh, blued finish is a tougher finish than like the old charcoal finish on the firearms. They're they're real susceptible about rubbing that finish off. It's not a, a real durable finish. Gorgeous finish, but all of our Westerns that I do, I always line them just because... I think it looks better personally. I, I think it looks better. But if you've got a rough inside holster, we take a couple extra steps when we're finishing it. Uh, use You can use atom wax on the inside mm -hmm. of that holster. Slick, uh, it down. slick it down. And that really helps the inside of it. Uh, right. Not uh, tear the gun up or anything like that. Right. But it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to get a little bit of holster yeah. wear anyways. And it, as, far as, as far as lining a holster, I like to line a holster. The main reason... It is not only is it, can you make it smooth or or rough out, but it gives you a lot more body to your holster. Exactly. You know, yeah. it, you you ha you end up with a lot less play in yeah. in your holster. If you look at that one, that is just stiff as a board. You know. And that's, Did you put anything in the in the center of that? No. No. no just, uh, just two pieces it's, of leather. It's Herman Oak leather inside uh, on the outside, and then it's a thin piece of Herman Oak leather on the inside. And it's got the good rigidity to it, as you know, like that right there. That's the main, that's the one of the big reasons why, because it, it gives it that extra body to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now here's another question. It says, which needle am I using for hand stitching? I didn't hand stitch this holster. The only thing I hand stitched was this loop on the back. And there are a hundred different ways to do that. But I used a, a double lot to harness needle when I did that and a piece of uh, artificial sinew. Uh, rule of thumb is use a size needle to, uh, to correspond with the size awl or, or a lacing punch that you're using. Uh, you don't want a hole that's too big. You know, if you've got a great big hole and use a small needle and a small thread, you're gonna end up with a hole that's uh, visible. And if you, uh, if you, if you stitch this this outside uh, stitch line with uh, by hand, uh, the same rule applies. You know, I would probably uh, use a, a small awl and a, a, a double aught or an aught needle, uh, a harness needle. Harness needles are blunt. They aren't sharp on the end. You can't punch a hole through it. Mm -hmm. You've got to do it with either an awl or a, or a lacing uh, stitching chisel. Yeah. But, uh, you yeah. know... Main thing is don't use too big a needle. Right. You'll have trouble stitching it. Yeah. 
Now I have a question. I don't do much hand stitching. Is there a rule of thumb? Like if you're going to stitch six inches, do you, is there a rule of thumb of how much thread to pull off? Just okay. It that that depends a lot on how uh, how thick your spine is there. Right. What how much you're stitching through? If you're stitching through an eighth of an inch of leather versus a half of an inch sure. of leather, uh, you're going to use less less thread. Uh, I would say one and a half to two times the the length ought to, okay. ought to do it in most cases. I would go two times on a on a holster like this with a with a thick welt on it. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Next question is about the round knife that I used. What brand is it, and do we sell it? Uh, it is a. a an Osborne round knife, and yes, we do sell it. We sell two different sizes. I, offhand, I can't tell you the number on them, but uh, I use the smaller one myself. Uh, but they're good knives. Just keep them uh, polished up and sharp. And uh, next, it says, please do the belt this holster was on. <laughs> That's something for the future also. I, I think we most likely will do that video. Uh, everybody thinks I've got the holster done. Now all I got to do is the belt. You know, to me, yeah. the belt is a lot harder than, than it, the holster is. It really is. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that go on the belt from the belt loop, from the bullet loops to, you know, your billets. Do you want them long? Do you want them short? Right. Where do they Where do they hit yeah. and everything? So there's a lot of things to consider on, yeah. on building. The yeah, belt. there are. And another question we've got uh, a question on a drop loop holster. It was the very last question on this sheet. A drop loop holster is this is a regular belt. It has no loops in it at all. A drop loop is the same belt only it has a loop. In it. Here's here's a pattern for a, for a big drop loop holster or belt yeah. right there. But it just has that loop that you slip the skirt of this uh, holster through. And that's another reason why uh, why this uh, hold down strap is on it. Because yeah. you can slip that holster out of that strap and then s slip the, the skirt and that, that strap through this loop and then put the, the holster back in the loop and, you, and you're... Uh, set up for that right there's a uh, you know building a drop loop like you said you know doing a belt there's a lot of things to consider on that the drop loop is that extra thing to consider because where do you how do you figure out on the on a different everybody's different right so how do you figure how far that drop loop's gonna go out to where do you want that drop loop at especially when somebody calls in and says hey i wear a 34 pants and i want a drop loop holster fix it up for me you yeah. know just it's it's kind of hard me personally, I'm not a big, I'm not a fan of the drop loop holsters yeah. because once you make that, that's where that yeah, holster is going. Yeah, the only place the holster can it, ride. You know, now it's nice because it is stationary and it ain't really, it's, it's not going to really go anywhere. But on this straight belt, like you built for this one right here, that holster can go wherever mm -hmm. you want it to go and move and you can move comfortably and everything like that. Right. Right. Uh you know there are there are so many things to consider, and a lot of people. You know, this is a straight drop loop. I've seen a lot of them. They will actually bow the belt down here, and then the yeah. loop even below that bow. Yep. You know, it depends on how far down on your leg you want that holster to ride. Right. If you look at uh, old Wyatt Earp on the old Wyatt Earp show and yeah. carrying that Buntline special, that gun was a foot long. Right. You know, yeah. if he if he had much of a drop loop, it would be down around his ankle. That's you right. Know? So you've got to take all that stuff into consideration. I don't recall if he had a drop loop belt or not. I don't know if you. I, you know, I don't recall from, but, from that uh, movie. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, but but all those things are things to consider. And uh, as far as the belt, the the bullet loops, those are. Pretty involved. They pretty really involved. Are. I need yeah. to take some lessons on them. <laughs> you know, there's there's the two ways. You know, you can stitch them in there, or you can loop them in there. And a lot of times, I like to loop them in there. And basically, you know, you're just taking a you know, you're just taking a smaller punch and some the looping leather and punching them out, and then you're just weaving them in and out that way. Uh, there's there's a little bit of. Uh, 
there's a little bit to that because you know you secure them with these rivets right here. If they do tear, you can you can yeah. lace another one in there. I'm not a I, I don't like I'm not a fan of the stitching because I don't like to stitch them a, but they're just they get so tight together. Right. There's, there's nothing. Right. It just kind of you got everything. To actually make the loops bigger to make things exactly. work out. Right. Yeah. And it just kind of makes everything tight to me. Yeah, traditionally, though, they were all stitched. They were, you yeah. know. But then you look at this belt here that you've done. It's lined, uh -huh. and every everything here is covered up on the inside. Right. You don't see it, you know, which is great. It's I nice. I mean, it's yeah, beautiful. You're not, and the nice thing about that is, you know, if you're wearing it a lot, which, you know, not many people are wearing Western rigs a lot anymore, but, you know, you're you're moving around, so your, your jeans or your jacket or whatever is not rubbing against those the thread right on those loops right. right there so right and really you know in in reality the you know i made this one a long time ago and these are the same bullets that i put in there when i the day i made it you're not going <laughs> to use those you're going to you're going to shoot yeah. out of the deal it's, yeah. it's they're more for decoration well, anymore. Yeah. and another thing you know i always tell everybody you know i like when i do the the bullet loops i like to make them really really tight yeah because they're never going to be any tighter than the first day they're, that's exactly they're right. made. They'll always yep. get looser. That's exactly and, right. Uh, yeah. You know, that's something to be aware of. Uh, one last question that we have here is uh, there's a fellow named Robert that's uh, interested in making a cross draw holster. And uh, how to alter this pattern to make a halter cross draw holster in. Do you want to talk about that, Matt? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, let me move this over here. We, this is your pattern that you use to make this right here, yes. right? Yes. So usually this is actually a cross draw holster right here also. So usually what I do is I draw this part of of the of the pattern. And then I figure out, you can take uh, your pattern for your belt and think, all right, where do I, where, how do I want that to look? How, how far do I want that to uh, cant? And then let's just say, okay, we're gonna do that right there. And then you draw your line right there and you fold it that way. You're, you're gonna leave this yes, bigger up here, big obviously. Paper. Yeah. So then you're gonna fold it like this and you're gonna just essentially draw this this way right here. And then that ends up being your cross draw pattern like that. So take this pattern and fold it that way with this still having it out here and then you can draw your, your back piece on it right there. Right. And uh, So it's essentially, it's essentially the, the, same, same, the same, same way we did this, you know, because when when we did this, this paper was, was big. Right. We folded it and then drew around the, drew around the holster to to make that skirt and yep. you would do the same thing only this would be at a different angle that's yeah. yeah you're just you're just changing that angle right there right. and then transferring basically whatever you want the back to look like out on this side right here and uh, another thing you can do on those depending on you know what belt you're going to put them on uh, the back side of the of the back flap right here, you can, and I usually just rivet a little piece of leather, you know, an inch wide, inch tall or something like that, mm -hmm. put a couple rivets in it where that belt's coming through. That way you've got a little piece that right. comes up over it. So instead of your holster yeah, doing so this right here, it it's got a little catch on it right there. It's so just a stop. It's just a yeah. stop, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be sewn in or anything like that. It can just, it can just be riveted into the yeah. back. Yeah. Matt, I was looking at this while you were talking. You attached your skirt a lot differently than than I attached mine. Your uh, your uh, hold down loop, yeah, is is I I made a couple of slots in mine and ran it through there. And I know there's a hundred different ways to do it. I've done it a lot different, but sure. I really like what you've done here. Yeah, why don't you talk about uh, that a little bit? You know what this is is on the inside. Uh, it's, it's a T nut on the inside piece, so you. You're going to punch a hole through both pieces and then you can kind of you run it around and you can kind of get your idea of where you want that and, and mark it. The thing that I like about using the T-nut and the screw on the back side of it is if you've got your drop loop, especially for drop loops, 
you can just take that screw out the back of it and slide it out. Whereas as this is going to be yeah, solely, you, you solely gotta made wad things for things up. Exactly. You got to, you got to really kind of yeah. move things around. Uh, so it, th these holsters like this are mainly going to be for the straight belts. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's how we do it right there. It's easier. It's faster. And like, you know, I don't hand stitch anything. So <laughs> <laughs> I like it like this. It's just, it's just a lot easier for us to, to all get. Right. All right. I guess we've answered about all the questions on this list. Uh, I don't know. I hope we've given you folks some insight on it. Uh, I, I think we have, we've done our best, but uh, Matt, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, yeah. where gaunt leather came from and uh, what you're doing. Okay. And uh, tell us about some crazy things that you do too. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you a little. Uh, so, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier about where we came from. Uh, I've got a construction background. My dad, I worked for him for years and years, and we did remodeling and cabinetry and all kinds of stuff. And dad was wanting to get something to where he was inside in the winter and inside in the summer anymore. And uh, so I, I talked to him. I said, hey, you know, what's your interests? What have you always been interested in? And he said, you know, a long time ago, I had a, I, I really enjoyed doing leather work. And I said, well, you know, go up to Springfield Leather and buy some leather and, you know, we'll make something. And he called me, I think it was the next day, maybe two days later and said, hey, I need you to come to the shop. And I'm like, oh, okay, what's, what do you got? And he said, well, I went up to, I went up to the leather shop and Kevin sold me a, a Toro uh, sewing machine and a couple sides of leather. So we need to make some stuff. <laughs> uh, so we, we did, and we went to a gun, gun show two weeks later with some holsters and sold a bunch of holsters and just really enjoyed it and it was uh it was a nice change of pace to be able to work all day and not hurt all day from doing construction right. you know so we did that and that was probably is almost 12 years ago uh when we when we kind of started doing that and we we pretty much make concealed carry holsters uh you know, strong side cross draw, shoulder rigs. We do a lot of the Western stuff, things like that. Uh, it's the, the main thing that, that I think makes our product so great is, A, we use Herman Oak leather strictly for everything. I personally think it's the best leather that you can use to make a holster. Uh, it it molds well, it bones well, it tools well. It, it's everything about it just finishes out great. Uh, it lasts uh, the guys up here, Springfield Leather, Kevin, Rusty, all the guys, they've been super great to work with, uh, getting hides and getting sides and everything like that. Uh, the craziest thing that I've been asked to make probably can't talk about, which is some odd stuff. I mean, but uh, the, the, one of the neatest things that I got to make was uh, a guy came in the shop and he had, I don't know if you know what a Desert Eagle pistol is. Mm -hmm. 50 caliber desert eagle pistol that's a you know it's a giant pistol and he had two of them and he wanted shoulder rigs he wanted a shoulder rig made with them and i said you know i that's i can make them but I'm not, i can't promise that you won't see them somewhere and of course then i got to look at him and the guy was like six nine and you know 300 pounds of just muscle he would hide them <laughs> and you know i made these two these gigantic shoulder rigs and you couldn't tell that he was wearing two 50 cal desert eagles. So that was a pretty neat uh, deal. Making a lot of the chest rigs, a lot of guys going out west and stuff like that. They like, they have their pistols up on their chest. Uh, and it's just that ebb and flow of kind of what the trends are. Uh, sometimes we go to where we just make strictly western rigs all, all month long. And then it's just concealed, you know, pancakes, right. you know. But that's pretty much what we do. Uh, right now, we're making uh, a line for the sheriff's department. Uh, we're making, they're, they got a mounted posse patrol. We're making those. Uh, they're all basket weaved and everything like that. And really, really nice looking stuff. But that's pretty much what we do. We're right here. And we're located here in Springfield, uh, 1902 East St. Louis. Uh, so we're just not too terribly far from here. So it's pretty easy to run up and grab something if we need something. Great. Well, Matt, we're glad you came down and thank yeah. you for letting us use your gun for this video. You bet. And thanks for telling everybody something definite instead of me just saying 
maybe this will work and maybe this won't. <laughs> well, I don't know how much I helped out, but I, I had fun. I appreciate you guys right. having me up here. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Danny.